What's up guys and welcome back once again to the reviews. Today I've got another AIO cooler, another one from Thermal Right. Uh, thank you for Thermal Right for sending this over. Today I've got the Frozen Magic 360 Scenic. Um, so we'll give this an unbox, we'll get it into the system and we'll give it a test. So as mentioned in the intro, this is the Thermal Right Frozen Magic 360 Scenic V2 version and we've got this one in white. Uh, straight away we can see it's 1700 compatible from the uh, label on the front. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about the specifications. So the specifications of itself, um, the bits you might need to know, pump speed 5300 RPM with a ceramic bearing and it's a standard 5 volt ARGB 3 pin and should be 40,000 hours pump life expectancy so that's nice to see. Um, adjustable RGB lighting on the pump block only, not on the fans. Uh, the static pressure fans included are the TLB12Ws and it's a high efficiency pump which is on the tubes like the Be Quiet uh, Pure Loop and we've got a low resistance radiator. And then the fans themselves are standard 120mm by 25mm fans, um, so you can put any of your fans on you want if you want to change them for your own. And they run at uh, 2150 RPM uh, with a static pressure of 2.87, an airflow of 69 CFM, and they are 4-pin PWM. Now the supported CPU sockets for Intel, we've got 1150 series, 1200, 2011, 2066 and 1700. And for AMD, we've got AM4, we've also got AM5, FM1, FM2, FM2+, AM2, AM2+, AM3 and AM3+, so pretty much everything you need. And this is the cooler itself, so as you can see the, the fans come pre-installed, which is really nice to see. Um, I hope, hope in there the right way round. So as this goes in, they're going to be sort of that way round, which isn't how I like to do it, so I might have to flip those. Um, but they are nice looking fans, they're all white, so if you look doing a white build this is going to look lovely. Um, it's a nice sort of square shaped uh, radiator with a thermal right branded on there in chrome. Um, looks really nice, even the cables on the fans are white as well and on the pump itself. So like I said the pump is in line, like I say like the Be Quiet Pure Loop, so that's um, another way of doing it as rather than it being in the block. Um, with a three pin connector on there. Then you've got the pump block itself which has got a sort of mirror effect and this is ARGB um, but you'll see that once I've installed it and I'll show you how it looks. And we've got standard uh, three pin five volt ARGB um, for the ARGB on there as well. And other than that there's not a lot to show you. Um, like I say it's a standard radiator really. Um, so yeah, let's get this installed. Let's see uh, how it looks and we'll uh, see how it performs. Right, so there we have the Frozen Magic 360 V2 Scenic from Thermal Right. Uh, again, massive thank you to Thermal Right for sending this over. Um, now, I've tested quite a few things from Thermal Right uh, in the past, in the recent past actually, and I've been impressed with every single one of them, and this is no exception at all. Now, the performance of it is great, and I'll get into those uh, figures in a second. Um, the looks of it are great. Um, one thing, the only, the only, and this is probably the only downside or I can say about it is the fans, if they're ARGB, would look even better. Um, however, they do, I think it's called the Knot or the Knotty, um, they do, uh, which is an ARGB, uh, AIO. I'm not sure on the specs as if it's the same sort of specs as this, so it perform as well. Um, but they do an ARGB, uh, 360, 240, and a 280, I believe. Um, so there is that available from them. Uh, but this in itself looks absolutely brilliant. The pump block looks lovely with the RGB on it. Um, the other thing with this is the thermal right logo is slightly off center, like slightly tilted on mine. I don't know if that's can be moved around or if that's just something that's happened. I don't know to be honest with you. But it's not a problem. It still looks really, really nice as you've seen in the uh, B-roll that I showed you um, of how it looks. Um, other than that, the Installation and absolute doddle. It uses the sort of clip mounting onto the a standard AM4 bracket. This is obviously for AM, AMD uh, motherboards, uh, CPUs. Um, with the Intel stuff from looking at in the box, it's pretty much standard with those uh, pegs basically that, that go on. Um, so shouldn't be too hard with that either. But for AMD, it's really, really easy to install. 
Um, so let's get on to the thermal results. Um, like I say, it was really, really good. Um, so at idle, so I basically did everything at, at full, at 100% just to see the maximum performance of this cooler. Um, and at idle, we've got 29 degrees, really, really good. Not a problem at all. Um, and then we went on to my usual sort of test suite, which is Cinebench, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Unigen Superposition. Uh, so first of all, I did Cinebench R23, a five minute run multi-core, and um, my maximum was 59 degrees, and my average was 56 degrees across the whole five minutes. So again, absolutely fantastic results there. Not a problem at all. Um, I may do in the future, I may overclock it and see sort of what the temperatures are once it's overclocked, but that'll be something I'll look at later on. Uh, and in terms of clock speeds whilst it's doing this, 4.2 is its maximum it hit. Um, as mentioned in previous videos, it seems to only get to that on multi-core on Cinebench. Um, I assume it's just the way it works with that. Um, so yeah, 4.2 on that. Uh, I then moved on to Unigen Superposition, 1080p Extreme in windowed mode, just so I can keep an eye on what's going off. And we've got a maximum of 64, which was, again... Like I've said in previous tests, was when it spiked when the the program was loading. Um, we got an average of 42 because it stayed way down. Um, it doesn't do a lot to the CPU. This it's more GPU, and my clocks went up to as high as 4.9 for some split instances, um, but stayed around 4.2 for most of it. And then we went to Shadow with the Tomb Raider, um, and I used it on the ultra wide settings of this 5120 by 1440 at ultra settings, and we got a maximum of 67 and an average of 56 as it did stay way below 67 for most of the run and my clocks were anywhere between 4.7 and 4.9 at times um, hovering around 4.2 to 4.4 for most of it so as you can see thermal uh, thermal results absolutely incredible and um, the design of it absolutely lovely um, I like I sort of like the inline pumps on these like I did with the be quiet and um, it does make some can make cable management a bit tricky because obviously you've got an extra cable on that pump which is way over to the side um, but it's not that much of a problem you get cable splitter as well for the fans which is included which is black for some reason but you, it's quite easy to tuck away because you can just route them all to it and uh, like I said ARGB fan ARGB on the uh, pump header um, so it's really really nice really easy to, easy to install and performs really really well so if you're looking at getting a 360 IAO, I can definitely recommend this to you if you want something that performs well. Uh, in terms of price, I'll, I'll put that up on the screen. I'll link it in the description below and the, I'll give you inf extra information in the description below as well. And that's it, guys. So thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Give it a like. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Leave me any comments you have or any questions you have about it and I will try my best to get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.